There are plenty of detectives still turning the suspect. Taking 15 minutes to talk to me with Shazuya wouldn't be such a big deal, would it? No, right now I've got a job to focus on. Interesting. No, right now I've got a job to focus on. Kano shook his head to clear out the foolish impulses. What the hell had he been thinking? A girl's life was on the line. Marrying Rumi was more important to him than anything, but now wasn't the time. Besides, now that he thought about it, running out on a critical investigation to meet with the old man probably wasn't going to score him any points. Rumi's dad didn't strike him as someone who would approve of striking one's responsibilities. Kano would just have to wrap up this kidnapping case a little ahead of schedule, then he could have a proper sit down with Shizuo. As he considered his plan, he caught sight of the man with the Atache case walking by. And Hirokawa's frantic journey has started 20 minutes earlier. He's been at home working on an interview piece. Clucked his tongue and the noise of the ringing phone broke his train of thought. Why did someone always call right when the words are flowing? If he didn't keep getting interrupted, he probably could wrap this piece up in no time. Be quiet! He pointed at the telephone as he yelled. I'm riding here! But his shouting did nothing to silence the ringing. He didn't have much choice but to pick up. When Rikawa was speaking, there was no response. Hello? He has it ready to hang up. Was this a prank call? It's me. It's Toyama. It was Toyo Toyama, the president of Heaven Publishing. No, oh, what do you want? This is about work. I'm already booked pretty full. He'd taken work from Heaven Publishing on several occasions, but the pay was highly competitive. Lately, he had been turning them down a lot, so he hadn't heard from Toyama in a while. No, this isn't work related. What do you want? I'm kind of pressed for time here, working on some copy. When Rikawa was in no mood to beat around the bush. It seemed like every conversation he had with Toyama went like this. Ah, you're busy. That's good. Which is good when you're a freelancer. Toyama sounded unusually sympathetic. When Rikawa found it off-putting. Your sales have been good on your end, he said cautiously. With this month's four-star general gossip and all. Four-star general gossip was a monthly magazine, heavy publishing his flagship publication. It had a small circulation and for the most part few under the radar, but once in a few while they'd land some big scoop and sell it crazy. This month's edition had come with a free scratch card, a gimmick that had moved 100,000 copies with ease. Five winning symbols in a row wins 100,000 yen, was it? Under Cow asked. A weak, moist sound came through the receiver. Huh? Baffled when Rikawa listened more closely. I feel like they made a mistake and a lot of people won. It came again, and again, it kind of sounded like sobbing. Mr. Tiyama, are you, are you crying? There was another soft sob and then yet another. What's going on? Where are you? When Rikawa asked. At the office, Tiyama managed. He let out another mewling whimper. What's the matter? It's nothing. Well, it's got to be something. Come on, what is it? Tiyama gave him a reply. Mr. Tiyama, you still there? Silence. What is it? What happened? Hmm. Look, hmm? It doesn't tell me anything. What the hell is going on? Tiyama squeaked out a drawn out whine. Okay, I'm sick of this. I'm hanging up now. And Rikawa was about to break the connection when he heard Toyama murmur. The only thing I can do now is die. The taxi's tires squealed as the cab rounded a corner. The shift and momentum made Nuri Rikawa topple over in the back seat. There we go, 10 minutes on the dot, the driver announced. Nuri Rikawa rented himself and looked out the window of Shibuya Station. I knew you could do it, Mr. Kimizuka. <laughs> told the driver how to get to Heaven Publishing. It shouldn't be more than five minutes further. Sir, if I may ask, just what are you in such a hurry for over? Son of a bitch. Beg your pardon? Kimizuka bristled. Not you, the guy who's waiting on me, Nuri Rikawa said. I'm gonna give that son of a bitch a piece of my mind. <laughs> okay. Multi tenant building where Heaven Publishing had its offices came into view. The taxi stopped outside. When Urakawa opened the door as he hurriedly reached for his wallet, then he stopped. What if the worst had come to pass and he headed to take Toyama to a hospital? Should he have the taxi wait here, or would it be better to call an ambulance? So is there a problem? The driver asked. Wait here, I'll be right back. No, fine. You're a lifesaver. How much do you? I hate these situations, man. I think I'll this one. No, I'm fine. You're a lifesaver. How much do I owe you? No, I'm fine. You're a lifesaver. How much do I owe you? When Urukawa paid the fare and got out of the cab, I'm going to swing by the train station. If I don't get any passengers to come by this way again, Kamisuka said. Okay, taxi pulled away. Once inside, he avoided the elevator in favor of rushing up the stairs. Heaven Publishing rented out the third and fourth floors, and all likely Toyama would be at the editing department of Four Star General Gossip on the fourth floor. 
and got there, however, the door was locked. Mr. Tayama! Hey! Mr. Tayama! He shouted and banged, but there was no reply. Something was seriously wrong. Nurikawa took a deep breath and then kicked the door in. Whoa! <laughs> Tayama was standing on a stool, about to slip his head through a noose that hung from the ceiling. What the hell are you doing? Nurikawa lunged for Tayama. Two men crashed to the floor in a tangled heap. A pile of clutter slid off of a nearby desk and fell on top of them. Mi Mi Minurikawa, what are you doing? Tiyama whined, dragging himself back to his feet to prove something of a challenge. That's what I'd like to, to like to know. Minurikawa's fury was mounting. What the hell is this all about? He jabbed an accusing finger at the noose hanging from the ceiling. Oh, that. One of the fluorescent lights died, and I was just swapping it out. Sure. Why don't you feed me that bull? What was that phone call all about? That business about how the only thing you could do was die. Tell me! <laughs> Just a joke. Tiyama curled his lips into a faint semblance of a smile. Minura Kawa wasn't buying it, but he didn't have time to press the issue. Cute little voice echoed through the editing office. Daddy, I'm back from the store. You have a kid, dude? Dude, you have a kid in here? The little girl came walking in carrying a length of rubber gas. It was Tiyama's fifth grade daughter, Hannah. Cheerio, Tiyama's only daughter. Wow. Currently 10 years old, the night Hannah was born at Shibuya Central Hospital, there was an unexpected fireworks display outside the window of the maternity ward. As he looked out in the bursting rockets, Teruo decided to name his daughter Hannah after the Japanese word for fireworks, Hanabi. Cool. Norikawa stared. Uh, Tiyama, you were planning on using that host too? He has a to end a sentence with cast yourself to death. Wow. Well, you know, it's almost gas heater season after all. Hell, it is! It was a beautiful sunny April day outside. Well, you know how sensitive I am to the cold? It was getting truly ridiculous. When Nurikawa got right up in his face. Listen, just explain to me what the heck is going on, okay? He kept his voice low, but his eyes were steely. Ha, <laughs> clock. Hannah clung tightly to her father, gazing wearily up at the two men. No, I... It's just... Tiyama let out a long, heavy sigh of resignation. Yeah, come on, man! Another keep out, man! Come on, man! <laughs> Why? <laughs> to progress further, you'll need to jump from another protagonist. Sometimes jump keywords might be hidden within a tip. A man named Junichi Anigashida shows up in Tama's story at 11.20. Huh. Tama. And he let out a sigh like Tiyama's. Try checking the tip for that. Ah, okay, I think I, I think I know that one. So I can just go to that one? I think I remember.